Hello, I'm Professor McCoy, and today I want to talk about a few distinctions in logic that are often misused. Uh, the first is the distinction between a sentence and a proposition, and the other distinction uh, is between fact, opinion, and preference. So the first distinction is between a sentence on the one hand and a proposition on the other. These are often used interchangeably in logic, but uh, there are times when a distinction needs to be made. So a sentence is a particular construction in a given language uh, that can contain one statement, it can contain multiple statements, uh, but can, can, if it contains multiple statements, we usually call it a compound sentence, so this and that. Um, but even not necessarily. Um, a sentence can also uh, not contain any statements whatsoever. For instance, a question, how are you doing? How are you doing is a, is a sentence, uh, but it's not a proposition. What a proposition is, is a single statement that can be either true or false. So, for instance, a proposition would be, uh, my name is Vincent McCoy. It says a single thing about me so that can be either true or false. In fact, this proposition is true. Uh, on the other hand, uh, another proposition would be, the wall is green. Well, that's a false proposition. Uh, it signifies something that could be true, right? The wall being green, it signifies something that we can understand the meaning of. But we can understand that it's false. A sentence, on the other hand, can contain mul multiple propositions. For instance, uh, the sentence, I'm sitting in front of a wall which is white. Right. That would be conveyed as two propositions. I'm sitting in front of a wall is one. And the other would be, the wall is white. That is a different proposition than, I'm sitting in front of a white wall because there's not a separate truth value to the wall is white. For instance, uh, so if the sentence, I'm sitting in front of a wall which is white. The first part, I'm sitting in front of a wall, could very much be true. But the second part could be false if, for instance, the wall had been green. So there's more to this distinction, however. Uh, more than one sentence can express the same proposition as well. For example, the two sentences, I am a human being, on the one hand, and I am a rational animal, on the other hand, express the same proposition, stated differently from a grammatical standpoint. Because, uh, if we're to take Socrates' definition of a human being as a rational animal, um, then these two terms can be substituted and convey the same meaning. And because they convey the same meaning, the two sentences are logically equivalent, which is to say they convey the same proposition. Um, and because they convey the same proposition, that means that under any circumstances, they have the same truth value. So if I were to, say, get my computer to say, I am a human being, that would be false, because it would convey the proposition, my computer is a human being. Whereas if I were to say, I am a human being, that would convey the proposition, Vincent McCoy is a, is a human being. So for any kind of statement with a personal pronoun like this, um, any kind of sentence, I mean to say, with a personal pronoun like this, can convey a different proposition, depending on who's saying it. So uh, if you were to have, you know, two people arguing, for instance, uh, and one person says, my name is Vince, and the other person were to say, my name's Tom. That wouldn't mean they're disagreeing uh, because the sentences seem to conflict. Now, if I were to say, my name is Vince, on the one hand, and then I would were also to say, my name is Tom, right? At least one of those would have to be false. 
Because I am saying them. They express the proposition, this person's name is Vince. Or, and on the other hand, this person's name is Tom. They refer to the same subject, so they express different propositions about the same person. But if two different people were to, say, were to talk about my name, quote, they're not talking about the same person's name. They're each talking about their own name. So if you were to say, uh, my name is Jeff, and I were to say, your name is Jeff, those are different sentences, but they're the same proposition. Okay, so why is this important? Well, primarily to eliminate any kind of confusion or ambiguity in logic. Um, see, we have an issue a lot of times in, uh, especially in more informal discussions, uh, when terms can get slippery and meaning can change. Uh, this is where we find equivocations in a logical syllogism. So, for instance, if I were to say, only men are rational, and... Rebecca, a woman, is not a man. Therefore, Rebecca is not rational. No, okay, great. Those statements, that, that syllogism, seems to follow deductively. However, it's either incorrect in that the first proposition is wrong, or there's an equivocation. So what do I mean? Um, in the one case, you can. See, in the one case, the first proposition: if we take "man" to mean male human beings, then the first statement is incorrect because female human beings are rational as well, right? Um, whereas in the second statement, where we take "man" to be male human being, it's obviously correct. If Rebecca is a woman, then she is not a man. In the meaning of male human being. In which case, the it logically follows, but is, is not sound because it has an incorrect premise. On the other hand, um, if we mean man, as in member of the human species, qua rational animal, in that case, then, the second proposition is incorrect. Because Rebecca, a woman, would by definition be rational, so the second premise would be wrong. And so then it wouldn't follow. So where the connection comes in here is by explicitly stating them, or at least more explicitly stating them, uh, as sentences to better express a proposition that they mean to express, we can see the equivocation more clearly and we can see why the argument doesn't fail. So if we're trying to be specific, for perhaps another way of stating each premise is, the first premise, um, which was originally, only man is rational. Another way of stating that same proposition in a different sentence would be, human beings are the only rational animals. And another way of stating the second proposition, the second premise, Rebecca, a woman, is not a man. Another way of stating that is, Rebecca, a woman, is not a male member of the human species. So stating them this way, it becomes much more clear why this doesn't follow. But they express the very same propositions as the earlier formulations, as the earlier sentences. This is more than anything a way of being precise in your language and understanding that while more than one sentence can express the same proposition, you have to be willing to alter your sentences to describe a proposition. So the important part when discussing logic is the proposition, not the sentence. Right? So criticizing someone's sentence structure, for instance, which is a common thing seen uh, especially on the internet debates, right? that doesn't actually address the argument because it doesn't address the proposition being described by the sentence. 
So hopefully that will help to rectify some errors in arguments that we all see from time to time. Now the second distinction I want to make is a very, very common error. Uh, and it's, it involves the distinctions between a fact, an opinion, and a preference. So we may have learned growing up about the distinction between fact and opinion, right? We've heard that a fact is something true or is a true statement, um, whereas an opinion is something you believe. Uh, and we may have picked up the notion that these are mutually incompatible. Um, well, first of all, that's obviously not the case, since we can have true opinions, opinions that correspond to facts. For instance, it's my opinion that my shirt is a shade of purple. Uh, it is also a fact that my shirt is a shade of purple, right? So it's obvious, of course, that fact and opinion then can't be mutually exclusive. But maybe we mean instead that opinions needn't be correct. An important thing to understand here is that facts and opinions can overlap quite a bit. Um, in fact, generally speaking, facts are a subset of opinions, or at least facts that we know about um, are a subset of opinions. For instance, if someone has the opinion that um, we landed on the moon in 1969, right? mankind landed on the moon in 1969, uh, that would also be a fact, but it would still be an opinion, an opinion commonly shared. Um, of course, there are also lots of other opinions, like uh, we didn't land on the moon in 1969, or perhaps some people think uh, some people have the opinion that we landed on the moon significantly earlier. Uh, maybe the Nazis set up a secret base on the backside of the moon. That was a science fiction movie. It's not real, but that's a fact. So anyway, um, so the point is that there can be lots of diverse opinions, right? So people can believe that different propositions are true. However, contained within those sets, uh, contained within all of those opinions, are some facts. So, why is this important? Uh, well, for instance, we like to say that people are entitled to their own opinion. And that can mean lots of different things. Uh, that can mean, uh, for instance, perhaps most plausibly, that um, no one else has a right to force you to have it, one particular opinion or another, right? Uh, it's an idea, it's the idea behind freedom of thought. On the other hand, it could mean that you have the right, or you are right in, holding your opinions, and others don't have a right to inform you that your opinions are false. That's entirely incorrect. Right? Um, certainly, that uh, if truth uh, has any value to it, then we ought to believe it. And if we ought to believe it, that speaks to what opinions we ought to hold. Now. Uh, this is, of course, this is, of course, a fine distinction between forcing someone to change their opinion on the one hand, um, and on the other hand, pointing out that an opinion is incorrect. Those are different things, obviously. But they can get muddled when we talk about someone having a right to an opinion. Now, alternatively, we could talk about opinions in a very different way. We could talk about opinions, um, for instance, I like vanilla ice cream. Right? Generally that is a token example of an opinion, right? Uh, that's what we learned opinions are. Opinions are matters of, well, I think one thing and you think the other thing and neither of us are correct or the facts don't determine the matter, uh, especially in matters of I like one thing, you like another thing. Um, or, perhaps we learned that value statements are opinion, like, I shouldn't steal, or I shouldn't do drugs, or any of these kinds of things, right? Things we learned as kids that are, that are, that are wrong, but that are taken to be statements of value rather than statements of fact. So we have this, this dichotomy, which uh, is far more than I can get into in this video, but... 
Uh, even if they are statements of value, that doesn't mean that they're merely opinion. Because an opinion, remember, is something that can be either true or false. So, it's either a true opinion or a false opinion, if it's an opinion. Um, so this is a, a, an important difference here from what we ordinarily take opinions to be and using precise philosophical language. So if we're to use this precise philosophical language, we wouldn't call, I like vanilla ice cream, an opinion. We would call that a preference. It's my preference for vanilla ice cream that I'm talking about. Um, or, for instance, uh, maybe uh, if we're talking in terms of, uh, of ethics right, or value, or, here's my other cat. <laughs> this is my other cat. But if we're talking in terms of value, right, maybe, um, maybe it's, you know, we can say that it's, um, Okay, I guess maybe he doesn't want to stay. All right, go ahead. All right, so, okay, <laughs> sorry I lost track. Um, but it was clearly my cat's preference not to stay on my lap, right? So it's not an opinion, it's not his opinion, if we can say that cats have opinions, setting that aside. But if cats can't have opinions, it's not, we're not saying that it was his opinion that he wants to be on the floor instead of on my lap. Instead, if anything, we would say it is his preference to not sit on my lap. Right. Now, this can relate into facts, of course, as well, uh, because it is very much a, uh, a proposition that I prefer vanilla ice cream, say, to chocolate ice cream. Right. That's a fact, but it's a fact about me. So if you were to express the same proposition in a sentence, it would be, Professor McCoy prefers vanilla ice cream to chocolate ice cream. Not, I like vanilla ice cream. Right? Those are two sentences. Uh, they express the same proposition, and that proposition happens to be true. Right? To say that, um, if I were to say, vanilla ice cream is better than chocolate, that sentence, right? that could mean a couple of things. That could be an expression of my preference. It could be saying, I like vanilla ice cream better, which is one proposition. Or it could mean something entirely different. I could be saying that vanilla ice cream is objectively better than chocolate ice cream for some such and such reasons. Uh, maybe I'm talking about nutrition. Maybe I'm talking about some objective standard of flavoring. Um, right? So that would be a completely separate proposition from I prefer vanilla to chocolate. However, either of them can be taken as a proposition, which is to say, either of them can be taken as a potential fact. Right. So if I were to say, uh, I prefer snacking on fruits to candy, that's obviously a statement of a preference, but if I were to say it in a different way, um, fruits are better than candy, well, again, similarly, we can take that in different ways. We can understand that sentence as a proposition stating that my preferences are for fruit as a snack rather than candy. That aligns with the previous sentence. That's the same proposition. On the other hand, we can take that as expressing the proposition fruit is more healthy for a human being than candy. Or perhaps the proposition, fruit is an overall better snack for a human being, all things considered, than candy. These are all different propositions that I could argue for separately, or I could assert separately at least. So they mean different things. And why is this relevant? So a lot of times we hear things like, uh, maybe going back to the Big Lebowski, right? Well, that's just your opinion, man. But what is that saying? Well, it's saying that you believe a particular proposition to be a fact. 
It's not just saying, well, that's just your preference, and I can't question it. Because clearly, I can't uh, explicitly question your premise, uh, your... I can't explicitly... Because clearly, I can't explicitly question your preferences. Um, I can say that I have other preferences, or I can inquire as to why you have the preferences you have, but I can't say, oh no, those aren't in fact your pre your preferences. Uh, no, no, no. You really do like vanilla ice cream better than chocolate. No, you'd think I was insane. That's, that's clearly crazy, right? You have direct access to your preferences, I don't. Uh, especially linking back to uh, our thoughts on Stoicism, right? Your preferences are up to you, they're not up to me. Um, so, the distinction to be made here is between a preference and an opinion. Because we often use these interchangeably, or we just use the term opinion for both. And this gets things muddled in philosophical discussion, um, and especially in ethical discussion. We'll say things like, um, well, for instance, uh, this has been going around lately, uh, talking about um, people's political opinions. And somebody saying that, well, um, there's a particular meme, actually. Somebody was saying how, um, yeah, I, I, prefer vin I prefer coffee to tea is an opinion, but um, some genocidal proposition about what we should do to a any given minority group. That's not an that's not an opinion. That's uh, that's hate speech. Well, it may well be hate speech. Right? I'm not here to deny that. What I'm saying is, that is an opinion. I prefer coffee to tea. On the other hand, is a fact because it is a proposition about my preferences. I do, in fact, prefer coffee to tea. Uh, in particular, a cappuccino to tea. But, the difficulty arises in considering the latter proposition, say in a, a political belief that you maybe rightfully disagree with. Especially in the context of limiting political discussion. Right? So, it is in fact an opinion because it expresses a proposition that should be under consideration for being true. So, instead of dismissing, an, uh, dismissing a political viewpoint as just someone's opinion, it's better to address the proposition that that opinion puts forward as true. Because if it is false, then it can be demonstrated as false then we can argue about it, and then we can show that it isn't true. And that's an important thing to do in any arena of discussion, especially in political discourse. And you may see the other side of this. Um, for instance, someone who defends their political views by saying, well, that's just my opinion. Well, if you're stating that, for instance, um, we should... Uh, we should limit immigration um, to only productive individuals. But that's just my opinion. What you're attempting to do is, you're attempting to say, this is what I'm putting forward, but I don't want to defend it. So I'm going to say that it's my opinion, and so just like an opinion like preferring coffee over tea, I don't have to argue about it. Because we shouldn't argue about things like whether I prefer one hot drink to another. Right. So, what I mean to point out here, especially, is that just because something is an opinion, or perhaps especially because something is an opinion, we can always discuss it as a matter of fact. Right? We can ask the questions about what our, say, immigration policies should be or what any other political questions, uh, answer should be, or any ethical question, or uh, any metaphysical question. Uh, this, uh, this also comes into play a lot of times in discussions of metaphysics. Um, so the biggest distinction to remember here 
is that an opinion purports to be a fact in every case. If I say that it is my opinion that something, what I'm saying is something is true, that, that statement. Right? If, it is, if it is my opinion uh, that, uh, that fruit is better than candy, what I'm saying is something about fruit and candy. I'm not saying something about me. Now, if I'm just saying I prefer fruit to candy, that, that proposition, that's about me. That's about my preferences. But if my opinion is about fruit and candy, then that is something that we all can discuss and debate the comparative merits of fruit and candy. Or if my opinion is for one candidate over another, then that's something we can discuss and we can debate the comparative merits of each candidate. In statements like this, political statements, ethical statements, um, metaphysical statements, aren't statements of preference. They're statements of opinion, and therefore are asserting propositions that the opinion holders claim to be as, claim as fact. So really this, this puts an entirely different spin than we're used to on political discussions, uh, on ethical discussions, on, on philosophical discussions in general. And it's an important thing to remember uh, that something being someone's opinion is not to make it either dismissible as just your opinion or as beyond question, uh, saying, well, that's just my opinion. So those are, the, those are a couple of the simpler distinctions, and I think a couple of very important distinctions that we often miss because they're relatively subtle. Um, but I think if we keep these in mind, it'll very much help uh, one everyday discussion, uh, and also uh, any kind of deeper philosophical analysis. Uh, keeping these things in mind help prevent any kind of confusion coming up. Um, and that's a very important thing, not only in everyday life, but in uh, careful philosophical consideration. So hopefully uh, these reminders or, uh, or perhaps new lessons uh, will help uh, in discerning these kinds, of, these kinds of important questions. So with that, I will leave you until the next video.